How long would it realistically take to build an app in your free time to start building a portfolio? This week, I'm going to play along with that idea and dedicate a couple hours of free time each day to building a small project from scratch. Let's see what can be achieved in that week. And as always, if you end up enjoying this video, consider liking it and subscribing for more content like it. Okay, so what will I be building? Well, here's my fancy standing desk. Actually, it's not really fancy, but I did splurge on one thing when I got it, that electric motor and interface to make it easy to move up and down to different positions. This will be the inspiration for the project I'll be building. I'm terrible at actually alternating between different positions throughout the day. I'll usually either stand for the whole day or sit for the whole day, and it somewhat defeats the purpose and the benefits of a standing desk. Sometimes I'll use a timer to remind myself to switch, but having to constantly go back to the timer to change its value right in the middle of a work session is usually too annoying for me to actually keep up with. With this app, I'll try to streamline that process of getting timed reminder to switch my desk setup and take breaks so that I can set it once, forget about it, and just have it guide me through my working sessions. So let's jump right into it and see how the week goes. Using this design file as a base, let's start building this app. I'm mostly going to be using this design file just as a guide. If something looks fine with the default look, I'll most likely keep it to save some time. First things first is creating the basic objects that will be used throughout the app and allow us some way to start populating the app with some data. At its base, we'll be using objects called sessions, something that's basically a routine or a set of instructions to follow. For now, we'll just add a way to create empty sessions, name them and display them in a list. The idea being that you might want to save a couple different configurations for different sessions depending on what you're doing that day. Next up, we'll want to fill those sessions with what I've called activities, or instructions if you prefer. For example, standing for 30 minutes could be an activity, and sitting for 20 minutes could be another one. Build up a list of those and you get a session that you can follow. We'll create a very basic way to create activity objects and have them be listed under their respective sessions. We'll create four basic types of activities that are most useful for people working at their desk to start with. For now, we'll just have them be created with default values with five minutes of time and leave it at that for today. Today. It doesn't accomplish much to only be able to create 5 minutes activities, so let's focus on that to start. We'll create a view that lets us enter a customizable timer for each activity we create. It's going to be pretty ugly for now, but we'll get back to update this UI a little bit later. We can at least use its functionality for now. Next up, let's start using our design file again to set up the basic UI blocks that will be used when we decide to start and follow along a session. We'll start by building something static, not hooked up to anything, just to get an idea of the look of it all. Let's have placeholder colors, but it looks close enough to the design. Let's hook this up to our data and add a dynamic countdown timer that will let us know the time remaining for our current activity. Already had a previous project that had similar countdown timers, so I went back to steal some ideas from there to make it work in this project. Big thanks to past me for figuring that one out. Okay, it's not too bad for now. We have an actual countdown timer that uses custom values that we decided when creating the activity. There's still a lot of placeholders and nothing happens once the timer ends but it's still a decent start. Today we'll focus on closing down the basic flow of the app so we have a better idea of how it all comes together. The main tasks to look at will be to make sure the activities chain together either once they're completed or when the user decides he wants to skip the remainder of the current activity. We'll also add some completion screen or view that lets the user know when the session has been completed. When that happens, we'll give the user a way to exit the current session or a way to restart it from the beginning. Almost halfway through this little challenge at this point, and it's not looking too bad. It's very simplistic and not polished at all, but we can get a decent idea of what the app's purpose is and how it would be used in a real situation. Let's look at polishing some of it then. First, by adding placeholders throughout the app where there's too much empty screen. Something to let the user know it's a normal use case when the app doesn't have a session yet or if a session is currently empty. It might sound a little bit weird to explicitly add something to a view to say that it's empty so that it does not look empty, but it goes a long way to make sure the user understands what he's looking at and that they're in a completely normal use case. We'll also replace some of the placeholder colors throughout the app to make it look like the design we came up with. I don't claim to be an expert at design or at picking the right colors. I'm just doing this so it's slightly more presentable than system green backgrounds and the like. Let's do some more polishing today. 
One thing I want to look at is updating the UI for an activity cell so it more clearly portrays what is going to happen in the activity and fits with the theme of the app a little bit better. Using the same colors used while the session is ongoing and giving a bit of room between the elements of that list seems to hit that mark pretty well. I'll also add a toggle here to allow for some smaller degree of customization within that session. During an ongoing session, it will just skip over whatever is disabled at that time. Next up, we'll fill out the placeholders that I added earlier this week for views with too much empty space. It's a very small amount of work required, but it does a huge difference in making the app look a bit more complete. While fixing those UI placeholders, I thought I'd also adjust the activity creation view to something a bit nicer. Day 6 is going to be the big one. So far I've done all my work using objects that were just temporarily floating in memory. Today I'm going to add core data to the project to have a way to save what the user has created to their device. Why do that now and not from the start? Well, I definitely don't recommend it, but I wanted a better understanding of how to add core data to an existing project and how well my Swift UI code would adapt to a fairly big change like that one. It took quite a bit of work to get working, but in the end turned out to be a bit simpler than I expected. Swift UI and its declarative UI make it really easy to do that type of change because everything should work fine once you've just replaced the source of the data to something else. In this case, just changing the places where I had temporary variables to instead be plugged into the core data objects was fairly simple and worked really well after it was done. The app already looks pretty complete and nice, but we'll use this last day to add some small changes to make it nicer to use. We'll add a setting screen that allows the user some simple preferences options, like the ability to have a sound play when an activity ends, or for sessions to automatically loop back to the beginning once they've been completed, without having to manually restart if you want to do the same session over and over again. I'll also add some basic ways to get in contact with me, as I usually enjoy seeing those in independent apps. It makes the work a lot more personable, which I really like. And that will conclude the seventh day of this project. So there you have it. Is it a revolutionary project? Not really, but it's a great starting point to build off of to something more interesting, potentially even something I could publish to the App Store after a bit of polishing. And even in its very simple state, it's in my opinion enough as a very simple project to add to a portfolio. Build up a couple of those and you'll start having a lot of interesting topics to discuss in interviews to showcase what you know and what your skill level is. And I don't expect everyone to build these things at the same speed, so don't worry if it takes a little bit longer for you to build something similar, but it should at least give you an idea that simple projects like this are definitely doable in a fairly limited amount of time if you just use a couple hours of your free time to do them every week. And in the end, you'll even have some tools that you can personalize to your own liking and actually use yourself. Ever since I've completed that first use case loop, I've been using this project and it's cool to know that I can add whatever I want to it to make it even better and suit my personal needs. And as far as this project's future is concerned, I'll put it up for an app review soon and add some more to it in my free time until I feel it's interesting enough to publish. And you know, when I replace the random art I found online with things I actually have the rights to use. If you just want to keep up with the development of this project and other iOS endeavors I take on this channel, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Hopefully this was a little bit of inspiration for you and made you think about your own projects that you could take on in the future. I'll see you all in the next video and until then, take care.